Welcome back to another episode on Beho Reviews in Gaming and Entertainment. In this episode, we take a look at the next installment of an IP that really gave me fond memories way back in the PlayStation 2 generation that absolutely made me a fan, and still a fan today, with Gungrave. Way back in 2002, I took a chance at a newly released action title for the PlayStation 2 that was released by my favorite company, Sega, with Gungrave. I was amazed with the cell shaded look and loved the dark story attached. I was so engrossed with the design by series creator Yasuhiro Naito and designs by Kosuke Fujishima, I was so happy to see the game translated into an anime series that also I owned based on the story. Needless to say, as an action junkie, this game left a huge mark on me in gaming. I did miss Gungrave Overdose and Gungrave VR as I transitioned to the Xbox at the time and never really revisited another Sony machine until the PlayStation 5. I was excited and surprised to see Gungrave Gore to be newly released and wanted to experience what I felt way back in time. Gungrave Gore, with Gore meaning Gunslinger of Resurrection, was developed by Igimob and released by Prime Matter in 2022 for the PlayStation 4 and 5 Xbox One and Xbox Series S and X and, of course, Windows PC. The installment is a direct sequel to Gungrave VR. The premise resides around the gun-wielding anti-hero, Grave, as he fights against enormous amounts of enemies to right the wrongs of the world in a third-person action shooter. The story revolves around Grave and team who are trying to stop a drug that can virtually take over the world. The events that led up to Gungrave Gore is retold as an option that catches up the player so you won't get lost as it has been 18 years since the last game. Honestly, this probably was almost the weakest part of the game as I had hoped for more but was really never truly interested. The gameplay here is almost like my experience with the original Gungrave where you pretty much mow down anyone who gets in your way in your quest for vengeance. There are supers and special attacks, but honestly, you will use primarily two guns 99% of the time, only relying on special attacks on bosses. The gameplay is incredibly satisfying in the beginning, but falls flat once you're in about 30 minutes to an hour later. I never found myself changing patterns or fighting differently at all, and found this unbearable and became more of a chore than entertainment as I played further and further in hopes it would get better. The visuals here is your standard affair with nothing really exciting to the eye. As a cross-generation game, it is crisper for the Xbox Series X where I played the game, but it also pushed the issues more with really subpar design choices. The animations of Grave and other playable characters like Bungie and Quartz are animated quite nicely and designed nicely overall. <laughs> But the rest of the level designs are quite bland, mostly in corridors and some outside, but still, nothing really spectacular here. There is a cell shaded mode, but honestly the game looks better in its original state. There is a ray tracing mode with reflections that push the game back to 30 frames per second, but I really can't see any graphical change, especially with my game that calls for a fast action where performance mode at 60 frames per second is my choice to play in. The cutscenes are hit and miss, with some pre-rendered more important story scenes in comparison to the in-game scenes. The in-game cutscenes are not animated well at all, and with a very dull story, more reason to skip. The English voice actors are not the greatest. Just like the cutscenes, the voices feel stiff and emotionless. Thank God for the Japanese voice option where it just sounds 10 times better. Of course, the writing and pacing just feels off in both languages, but the Japanese voice is the way to go. Bummer, you'll be stuck with me for a while. Where's Grave? He didn't come out yet. He's looking for me in the cave. I'm not a child anymore, you know. A huge orc creature collapsed the cave roof. Damn, is he alright? Is he good? 
I don't know. Well, we need to go back there and check. We need to go back there and check. グレイブはどこまだ出てきていないまだ洞窟で私のこと探してる私はもうガキじゃないってのに巨大なオーグ生物が上から落ちてきて大崩壊したそんなグレイブはあいつは大丈夫なのいやわからんじゃあ早く戻って確認しな Overall, the game became a reality to why I enjoyed the original so much that was due to the stylized action and a really well told story of vengeance in comparison, Gungrave Gore does not excel at the story or pacing, and the design of the game does nothing that excites you to really move forward in hopes it gets better. It never got better for me, and became something I felt could have been better spent on another game. The game is also troubled with dated gameplay. That worked well in the original Gungrave way back in 2002, as it was a much shorter game with a fantastic story that made the game short and sweet. Today, making the game much longer exposes Gore for its uninspired combat that may have been okay with a more engrossed story. Grungrave Gore gets a 6.0 out of 10 for its repetitive gameplay and uninspired story and level design that just becomes more of a chore than entertainment. That's it for this look at Gungrave Gore. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Be ho out and great. Take us out of here and I will see you all next upload. Damn.